on everybody it's your favorite auntie mo we are back for another episode review of the real black china this is season one episode eight that shrinking feeling before we get into the review if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and hit that notification bell so you will know whenever i upload new content y'all let me let you know right now this episode got on my damn nerves okay Hopefully, I can make this review entertaining enough for you guys because um, it gave me a little bit of headache. Like, I was just done after a while. But it was good. Again, it got on my damn nerves, but it was good. So hopefully, y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So the episode, this episode was all about therapy, okay? The first half started off with China in therapy. The second half was Tonio in therapy, right? So she's going to see Dr. Siri. He's like this, you know, famous therapist to the stars, you know, one of them rich ass shrinks or whatever, right? So China goes to see him. When she goes in, she's all dolled up. She's perfect. You know, he's just blown away how beautiful she is, how perfect she is. Not a hair is out of place. So she sits down and he's like, so, you know, how are you doing today? She's like, I'm stressed out. I just got a phone call that I'm about to be sued by somebody else. This half of China always getting sued. Like, damn, she gets sued by the milkman, the paper boy, the brush lady, the washer. Everybody's suing her ass. But that's neither here nor there. So she gets to talking about, um, you know, what some of her accomplishments are because the doctor asked her, you know, so what are you here for today? What are some of your biggest accomplishments and what do you want to get accomplished with this, you know, this therapy session? She says she wants to have a better relationship with her mother and as far as some of her biggest accomplishments, uh, 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 I can't even get it out. Some of her biggest accomplishments would be the fact that, you know, she had her two babies. She's been raising her babies on her own and that, you know, she's become sick stable and so once she said stable the doc was like what do you mean by stable you know that's let's kind of touch on that for a little bit right and so she gets to talking about how you know she was raised with her grandmother how she never really felt like she was a priority in Tonio's life how Tonio was married like five or six times how she always chose her husbands over her and how she never really felt like you know she was just um, a priority in their lives I mean, well, Antonio's life. And so the doc asked her, you know, what was this whole thing that your mother had brought up about, you know, the statutory rape thing, you know, tell me about that. And so, you know, she was saying how, you know, Tonio went on this rant, how she went on social media and was calling China um, a statutory rape baby, right? So the doc asked her how old she was, you know, Black China, the first time she had her first sexual experience. Now she was saying that she was around 16. The guy that she was with was like 24, 25, and she didn't see anything wrong with that, right? And so the doc is trying to get her to realize like, okay, you were 16, he was 25, you know, you don't see anything wrong with that. Like, how would you feel if your daughter were to come to you? She's 16 and, you know, she's messing around with a guy that's 20 something years old. China's like, oh, well, I would definitely talk with her with it. I mean, you know, and I would talk to him about it too. I would get on him. But again, she really didn't see a big deal about it. Now she starts to get a little bit defensive with him. She was like, well, would it make, would it be better if he was 17 or, or 18? Like what difference does it make? I don't see anything wrong with that. And so the doc could kind of see that she was getting a little bit irritated. He was just basically trying to like break down this wall with her because she kind of came in with this wall up. She was pleasant, yes, but she wasn't really down to like open up and really talk about anything. Y'all, so this is when China started to get on my nerves. Again, you could tell she was getting irritated with the doc and the questions that he was asking because basically he was trying to get her to open up and in some ways admit that, you know, do you think that maybe you got molested by this guy that was 25 and you were 16? Now, it's like she doesn't want to hear it. She just kind of puts up this whole defense wall. And you know when China, when she gets irritated or when you start talking about something she doesn't want to hear, she just kind of does this blank stare where she's just looking at you like you stupid. And it was just getting on my nerves. So then they started talking about, you know, like where did you live? So she said she lived with the rental lady, the with the rental apartment lady for a while because Tony was in and out. She said she lived with her dad for about a year. She hated it. So she went back to Tonio. So she just has this wall built up where she 
She just don't like nobody. She's just defensive with everybody. So then as the doctor is asking her more questions, she starts to like get fidgety and all that. It was like, oh, my mic hurts. Can somebody come and fix my microphone, please? So then she starts to be sarcastic with the doctor. She was like, hmm, so how are you doing today? As he's getting ready to answer, she completely ignores him, starts brushing her hair, fixing her makeup, like, and the doc is kind of like, damn, wow, okay, like, really? So he's just basically like, so who is the real black China? Because you seem like you, you have to be on 24-7. Your hair has to be perfect, your makeup has to be perfect, your clothes have to be perfect. Like, who is you? I was thinking the same thing. I thought this show was called The Real Black China, because ain't nothing, in, unless this is really who she is. Girl, I thought I was gonna like you. I don't know how I feel about her. I really, really don't. In this moment, I did not know how I felt about her. Because the doc was like, you know, why do you feel like you have to keep up this persona of, you know, being this person that's on 24-7? She says, you know, because she had to take care of everything herself that, you know, Oh, she was just getting on my... So the doc kept bringing up the word shame, right? He kept saying shame because he wanted Black China to have some sort of humility because he's saying if you have some humility, that's the only way that you can sort of heal through whatever pain it is that you're going through. So he keeps bringing up shame. Like, do you feel shameful for this? Or, you know, just basically not outright asking her, but just trying to get her to understand certain things. Here she go again with this passive aggressive smart ass crap. She's like, you know what? I'm gonna look up what this word means because you keep saying this and I don't like when you say this and I don't see this as being me at all. So real smart ass, she like goes to the Google dictionary and looks up shame, reads out the definition of it. Then the doc tries to give her some other analogies. Like, okay, there's the elephant woman, there's the horse woman, there's a the swan woman. She's just really not listening to anything that he says, right? Then she's like, I need to take a break. She gets up, goes in the corner, starts talking with one of her little assistants, starts talking crap about Dr. Suri, like he's not even there. Talking crap loud enough for him to hear. What the hell is he asking me this for? Like, what the hell does he mean? Just being real disrespectful. At this point, I ain't gonna lie, I kind of zoned out because I was, I, 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 I just couldn't believe she was acting like that. I was like, damn. This is the real black China. Girl, this, really? So after she comes back from her break, the doctor brings up the men in her life and how the men in her life have affected who she is today. Now she does bring up something I didn't even know. She says that when she was pregnant with King, her baby daddy, Tyga, he didn't want nobody to know that she was pregnant. So she had to hide her pregnancy the whole time that they were together. Up until the point that she delivered, nobody knew that she was pregnant. She says she didn't have a baby shower. She doesn't have a single picture of her pregnant with King. She doesn't have any memories. And so that is a little bit of resentment that she holds towards Tiger for that. And so when she kind of came back from that break that she took, she did most of the talking. I guess it took her, I don't know if maybe somebody talked to her during that break and made her realize like, hey, you acting like a little bit like a bitch. Like you need to calm down and like be open and receptive to what this man is trying to tell you. Cause when she came back, she was completely open to talk. Like, she realized that she needs to, you know, close her mouth and open her ears. She realized that she can be defensive. She can put this wall up, that she can bottle everything in, that she has a problem with communicating and she needs to work on that. And so I was thoroughly pleased. I was proud of her that she recognized that because you could literally see that little bit of growth in her just from them few minutes. Because like I said in the beginning, I was like, oh, hell no. I do not like this heifer. Until it ended, I was like, okay, now I see why you, you, you like this a little bit the way that you are, right? And so as that session ends, you know, of course he asked, how has Tony affected her life? And so they get into that whole thing with Tony. And so China's session actually ended really good. She's looking forward to the time that her and Tony can sit down and talk with Dr. Suri. And that was the end of their session. Lord, next y'all was damn Tony, oh Lord, have mercy. Girl, I had to take a big old swig on this one. Okay, so now we at Tonio. Tonio getting a session right off the bat. Ain't nothing her fault. She's there to help her daughter. 
her daughter need help, she don't need no help, her daughter don't know how to communicate, none of that. She feels like she gave 120%, she was there the whole ride, she don't know why her daughter is the way she is, ain't nothing her fault. That's where you messed up, right then and there. She came in on a hundred like, I ain't did nothing wrong, I'm here because my daughter need help, right? So Dr. Siri is trying to get her to realize like, look, I just want you to realize everything is about perception, okay? Now your daughter's perception is that she was abandoned. She was alone. You weren't there. She was raised by her grandmother. Tony, you steady going in. That ain't true. I ain't trying to hear that. I ain't do nothing wrong. Bloop the bloop. I mean, it was getting... I'm not even finna get into all the details with Tony O's session because it was getting on my damn nerves. The doctor was basically trying to help her to realize, look, even if you know you was there, regardless, this is how she feels. And if you want to get better with your daughter, you want to work on your relationship, then you're going to have to shut the hell up and just realize this is how she feels, okay? Once you realize this is how she feels, then y'all can work on that communication trying to break everything down. Now, Tonio just as hard-headed as China. She like, oh, so you want me to just be mommy dearest to her? So you just want me to bow down and kiss her ass? So you just want me to tell her that everything is right? And he's like, no, woman. I want you to realize that as a mother, you need some humility, your dog on self. You more than anything because you are the parent and you as the parent has to be the person to set the tone. You can't come in on a hundred and expect her to just give you all this respect as a parent. Because according to Tonio, she like, look here, she basically feels like the sacrifices that I made for my daughter, she said she was hemorrhaging when she was pregnant with her. She said she could have aborted her, but she didn't abort her. She says that Tonio's daddy, I mean, uh, China's daddy was a pervert, and she could have aborted her, but she didn't. So because of that, basically, China owes her everything. That's basically to sum it up, what she was coming at and what she was saying. Now, y'all, I did feel bad for Tonio because she was saying when she had met um, China's father, she had met her in, um, she had met him in the mall. A few hours later, he was buying her clothes. A few hours later, they're in a hotel room having sex. She claimed she was 16. She was a virgin. That was the first time having sex and she got pregnant. He ended up leaving her or whatever from there. The ultimate thing that Tonio doesn't like is that China still has a relationship with her father. That's what she doesn't like. And so the doctor sort of helped her to realize like, look, you were molested, you know, as a, as a, a teenager or whatever by this older, older man who took advantage of you. So basically the hurt and the pain and the anger that you have towards him, you put that towards your daughter. And so she sort of realizes that, you know, and I was proud of Tonio because in the end, she realized that she's rough on her. Now, she does say that, that she, if the only thing that, you know, she does recognize that she is, you know, bad about with China is that she's hard with her. She says she's a gangster with her because that's all she know how to be because that's how her mother was with her. And so he's basically telling her like, look here, we don't, y'all gangsta enough. We don't need no more gangsters up in here. So y'all, their therapy session went on from there and it ended with Tonio realizing, okay, I need to be a mother. I need to slow down, pump my own damn brain, shut my own damn mouth, open my own damn ears and listen to what my daughter is saying. So at the end of her session, it ended well. It's, you know, it ended well good. Cause again, Baby, in the midst of it, I had to zone her ass out too. I'm like, Lord, what? I can't take all of this. This is too merch. It's too damn merch. But y'all, the episode ended from there with her hugging it out with the doctor. She's looking forward to when her and China sit down. Now, on the next week episode, I wonder if that's going to be the full hour of them in therapy. If it is, baby, that review only going to be about five, ten minutes because I can't take all of that. I could barely take this right here. I'm surprised I gave you the, what, 15 minutes worth of review that I'm giving you now, because I did not think it was going to be this song at all. But um, if y'all seen the episode, if there's anything that I missed, please comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and auntie will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.
What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala!